Have you ever wondered who or what the Antichrist truly is? It's a question that has intrigued and confounded scholars, theologians, and curious minds alike for centuries. The concept of the Antichrist, this elusive yet potent figure, is shrouded in mystery and steeped in varying interpretations. Some view it as a symbol, others as a person, and yet others as an embodiment of evil. Our aim in this video is to peel back the layers of this enigma. We'll be examining key passages in the Bible that reference the Antichrist and discussing the range of interpretations that have emerged from these scriptures. We will journey through the Old and New Testaments, dissecting verses, and diving deep into the heart of one of the most fascinating and debated subjects in religious study. So, buckle up as we delve into the pages of the Bible to unravel the mystery of the Antichrist. The concept of the Antichrist doesn't just pop up out of nowhere in the Bible. It's a notion that's delicately woven into the fabric of biblical narratives, casting a shadowy figure on the horizon of the Old Testament. One of the earliest allusions to the Antichrist can be found in the book of Daniel. Now, Daniel is not your average bedtime story. It's a book filled with visions and prophecies that have captivated scholars for centuries. One prophecy in particular, Daniel's vision of the four beasts, has been widely interpreted as a reference to the Antichrist. In this vision, Daniel sees a succession of four great beasts rising from the sea, each one symbolizing a kingdom that will arise on earth. The fourth beast, described as terrifying and dreadful, is often associated with the kingdom of the Antichrist. Another passage in Daniel, the prophecy of the 70 weeks, also hints at the Antichrist. It tells of a prince who is to come, who will make a covenant with many, only to break it and bring desolation. This prince is often interpreted as the Antichrist, a figure who will deceive many through false peace. These passages, filled with symbolic language and apocalyptic imagery, can be challenging to decipher. But they share a common thread, a dark figure who stands in opposition to God and his people. They foreshadow a character who will emerge more explicitly in the New Testament. So what do these passages tell us about the Antichrist? They paint a picture of a powerful, deceptive figure who will rise to power, only to bring destruction and desolation. They hint at the Antichrist's duplicitous nature, his ability to deceive and lead astray. But they also remind us of the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom. As we delve deeper into the biblical texts, the image of the Antichrist becomes clearer, more defined. The stage is set, the characters are in place, the story continues to unfold in the New Testament, where the Antichrist steps out from the shadows and into the spotlight. These passages set the stage for the more explicit descriptions of the Antichrist in the New Testament. The New Testament brings us closer to the understanding of the Antichrist. Diving into the New Testament, we discover a more nuanced portrayal of the Antichrist, specifically within the books of 1 John and 2 John. In 1 John, the term Antichrist appears four times. The scripture warns of many Antichrists, suggesting the presence of numerous false prophets or deceivers. These Antichrists are said to deny both the Father and the Son, indicating a rejection of divine authority and the central tenets of Christianity. This denial, according to the text, is the hallmark of the Antichrist. 2 John, on the other hand, mentions the Antichrist once, reinforcing the idea that the Antichrist denies the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. This denial of Christ's incarnation is another defining trait of the Antichrist. Now let's delve into the common interpretations of these passages. There are those who interpret the Antichrist as a singular future figure of monumental evil, a sort of satanic counterpart to Christ. This interpretation often fuels end times prophecies and apocalyptic scenarios. On the other hand, some scholars argue that the term Antichrist does not refer to a single entity, but rather to a type of person or spirit that opposes Christ. In this view, the Antichrist is not a specific individual, but a symbol of all that is contrary to the teachings of Christ. Yet another interpretation posits that the Antichrist may be a metaphor for the internal struggle within each person, the battle between good and evil, faith and doubt. As we can see, the Antichrist, as presented in the New Testament, is a complex and multifaceted concept. 
the interpretations vary, reflecting differing theological perspectives and cultural contexts. It is a subject that continues to fascinate scholars and lay people alike, inviting us all to delve deeper into the mysteries of faith, morality, and the human condition. These passages give us a clearer picture of the Antichrist, but the interpretations vary widely. Interpreting biblical passages is no easy task, and the Antichrist is no exception. Now, when we delve into the various interpretations of the Antichrist from different theological perspectives, we find an array of beliefs, each with its own unique angle. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion, revealing a rich tapestry of understanding and insight. Let's start with the traditional Christian interpretation. Here, the Antichrist is often perceived as a figure of ultimate evil, a future leader who will deceive many in the end times. This interpretation draws heavily from the books of Daniel and Revelation, painting a picture of a charismatic yet deceptive character who will rise to power. On the other hand, some Protestant reformers took a historical view, associating the Antichrist with the papacy. They saw the Pope's claim to religious authority as a form of spiritual deception, aligning with the Antichrist's role as a false prophet. Meanwhile, in the realm of eschatology, or study of the end times, there's a belief in a symbolic Antichrist. This interpretation views the Antichrist not as a single individual, but rather as a system or institution that operates in opposition to God's will. Yet another school of thought prevalent among some modern scholars is the metaphorical interpretation. Here, the Antichrist is seen as a metaphor for the internal struggle against sin and evil within each individual. Despite these differences, there's a common thread running through these interpretations. Each sees the Antichrist as a force of deception, a challenge to faith, and a sign of the end times. Whether viewed as an individual, an institution, or a metaphor, the Antichrist symbolizes opposition to God's truth. So, as we can see, the Antichrist is a complex figure with multiple interpretations, each offering a different lens through which to view this enigmatic character. From the literal to the metaphorical, the historical to the eschatological, each perspective provides a unique piece of the puzzle. These interpretations offer a wide range of understandings, each adding a unique layer to the Antichrist narrative. Our journey through the key passages and interpretations about the Antichrist ends here. We've traced the genesis of the Antichrist beginning with the Old Testament, where the groundwork for this figure was first laid. We then journeyed into the New Testament, where references to the Antichrist become more explicit, particularly in the books of John and Revelation. We've seen that the Antichrist isn't a simple character. It's a complex figure that has sparked countless interpretations over the centuries. Some see it as a symbol of systemic evil, while others interpret it as a specific individual who brings about end times. We've also explored how these interpretations have evolved and continue to evolve, influenced by cultural, theological, and historical contexts. The Antichrist remains an enigmatic figure, but hopefully this exploration has given you a deeper understanding of its presence in the Bible.